there's a scene where he is walking towards this door that has been barricaded. And I had to stop the movie and Climb. message Brian and say, what the f Why did they motion track a helmet onto this guy? Welcome back to Get Better, Bad, Bad, the 144th episode. The show watch terrible movies tell you if you should too. I'm your host, it's Brian Shilligo. Uh, Brian Shilligo Thorson. <laughs> Joined as always by my other host. My brain stopped working for a second. Uh, my other co-host, <laughs> Mr. Kyle Hinton. I don't. I don't have a Norse god name. Kyle Odinson. <laughs> This one, uh, hold on, let me find Wait, This one was a recent mailbag. Very recent mailbag. I was looking at some options uh, and ended up uh, coming to the conclusion that we needed to watch this movie. And this movie is... Now, are those both the same? Shut up. Hold on, we'll talk about ooh, it. Ooh. Vikingdom slash Vikingdom Evil imp Empire Viking Fall of an Empire. Only an undead can pass through Helheim and return to meet God. Then I'll return for the crown. Instead, I've been asked by the gods to take on a battle with impossible odds. With whom? The god Thor. Okay, so Kyle, these movies are the same movie. Wait, wait. These are the same fucking How? movie. They're, they're just renamed the same movie. They, they made one of these. They're like, they were like, 300's hot. Let's just go ahead and rebrand it. Yes. I think so what they did is... This is the original, is the Vi just Vikingdom or whatever. But then you'll notice, okay, so the, this is Vikingdom. This one is called Vikingdom Empire Viking Fall of an Empire. And then the movie we watched on Tubi, the subtitle is like Vikingdom The Blood Eclipse. So it has like a million names. This one, absolutely. So this subtitle, they added to capitalize when the sequel to... The 300. 300, because yeah. it was called like Fall of an Empire or something I like that. Rise, I think Rise of an Empire. Is, yes, is and this one's called Fall of an Empire. Yeah. So that's why they did this, is they rebranded to capitalize on that. All the same movie. Money, There's just money, one money. movie. It's named a thing, a different thing a million different times. Kyle, this movie is garbage. <laughs> But also kind of fun. I don't know. It's um, mostly garbage. I watched it and I was like, why does this why does this feel like a miniseries? It doesn't feel like a miniseries. Well, it because it's episodic. That's why it, it feels is. like okay. a miniseries. Because we're doing a bit of like an Odyssey style deal of like mm. little vin, you know, like they go here and they have this it's not a bunch of that, but a little bit of that. Um and then the biggest thing is that the, that it feels like a miniseries is because it looks like shit. May he not treat you the same. It looks like it absolute does. shit. It looks like garbage. And and the problem is that... Like 100% of this was shot in front of some green screen. Yes, and, and they tried so hard to make it look like 300 or something, but with none of the know-how or technical um, skills to, to pull that off. So it just looks like blue and or teal and red vomit it's mm -hmm. just teal and red vomit on your screen and it's yep. horrifying everything is desaturated except for like reds and teals because they need that blood yes and, and, and that's what they're going for but it's also not done well like it's it, it it's patchy it's clearly they did this in like a single pass on a on a, in a consumer level um color grading you know software mm -hmm. and we're just like Good enough for yep. me. Looks great. Uh, uh, this movie has a 3.3 on IMDb. It has a 43% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is incredibly high, all things considered. That being said, there's only seven reviews, okay. so it's like three positive yeah. and four negative. But I'm sure one of them was Dominic Parcells' like friend or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's the speaking of that is the main person this movie stars mm -hmm. uh, that people might know is Dominic Purcell prison break uh, prison break. Uh, he's been in at least one movie that we've done. Um, wasn't he in uh, 
What was that superhero movie? Cross? Yes. Wasn't he in that? No, that was uh, Vinnie Jones. A man cursed to live forever. I can't die. You ever felt pain on it? That's who I'm thinking of. We got to the bottom of it. I was thinking of <laughs> Vinnie Jones. They're like the same giant yeah, jawed freaks. Clearly. I don't know. Like, whatever. Um, <laughs> opening credits on this movie fucking suck. <laughs> they're no, so they're bad. so bad. <laughs> The, the beginning of this is just Dominic Purcell dying. Yes. And you think that he he's talking about the story of his life, and you think this is a flashback. This whole movie's a flashback. Everybody has a story to tell about their lives. My story begins the day I died. It's not. No. It's all after he died. Yes. <laughs> Which is such a weird non-reveal. The wildest thing about that is you would think that that would be like a big reveal moment when that is becomes like you know like oh because that's actually kind of clever as like a storytelling because it is very common mm. like oh we see him die he says this is the story of my life yeah then we go flashback that's the traditional way you would do this no doing it the opposite is interesting it, but they don't it they they don't re like if it re was revealed it, that this it, was all it would be if this was like something to do with the first act in regard to just like setting yeah like you could introduce characters you could introduce setting like Svins for instance you could introduce him yeah but I guess they kind of do for like a second y yeah he's there like he's holding his yeah. head or whatever I think but, uh, you could also introduce the goddess who brings him back no I think it's actually fine if they do it the way they did it and then cut forward and we think it's all flashback but then you need some moment where it's revealed that this is all that he this is all taking place after mm -hmm. he died and and it needs to be a big moment of reveal yeah. in this it's just like offhandedly mentioned oh by the way you were revived by a goddess yeah, yes. <laughs> and, and then we flash back and see that happen and i'm like oh i am no match for a god but you are not just a man you are far more ordinary men are not brought back to life. Okay. Oh, okay. I guess that's all right. It's so weird. Cool. Um, but I love as that we're pushing in over that battlefield at the beginning, uh, and there's bodies everywhere. One of those bodies in the foreground, it's it's CG, and you can see the head floating like six inches off the ground <laughs> as the as the camera. The motion moves. tracking's like it's really not, bad. Not great. <laughs> There's some, there's some uh, after effects in this that Brian and I looked at where we were like, okay, first off, we could do a better I job. I could do that, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I could have done that. <laughs> I could have done that. Then, so uh, he dies, and then we get what we think is a flashback, opening, cr opening credits, opening title, mm -hmm. um, and then we cut to Thor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kyle, I could talk about Thor in this movie for the rest of my life. Is this the beginning part where he's? Yes. Uh, it's like the it's like the epilogue. It's like the, the him conquesting yeah, everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first off, Thor is uh, played by uh, Conan Stevens, who. Yeah, I had to. I had to remind. This, he looked familiar to me. Game yeah. of Thrones. He played the mountain in season two. Yes, giant fucking man, seven foot one. And, and you, you, he looks it in this movie. And I'm sure they cheat even a little bit more because he's enormous. In, yes, in this yes. every every time he's by people, he's like four feet taller than them. And uh, and yeah, it's it's pretty impressive. He's a large man, but Thor. And so I know that very often Thor is depicted as having red hair, oh. you know, like a red beard or red hair. <laughs> this but in this is movie, ridiculous! It's it's it, bordering on fuchsia. <laughs> it is electric red. He it looks like it it, it it looks like what it is, which is a bad wig and fake beard. Mm -hmm. But it's so red. It's yeah. so red in a way that looks. He looks like a clown. Like it looks ridiculous. It's insanity. Um, and and big part of that I think is the color grading because the color grading is just so obnoxious. I am Thor, son of Odin. Brother of Baldur. 
Also, his armor looks... He's got, like, the molded, like, muscle chest plate, and this, his hammer looks tacky. Everything uh, about all the of The hammer this. looks like something that somebody made for, like, a LARPing. Yes. There's something serious happening here, and I'm going to find out what's going on. Paradise! Yes, you can tell it's made of foam or rubber or, like in a way that this looks uh, looks bad. It's mm. not, but it's not terrible. Like it doesn't look like, it's not the same quality as like, you can tell there was at least enough money that they made a bunch of props for this movie. It's not the same quality as like watching some of those like homemade movies where they, you know, although there are weapons like that, but like this <laughs> hammer they clearly made for this or something. Um, and it doesn't look terrible, but it just looks, it's not, it's like yeah. right in that middle ground between good enough for screen, mm -hmm. but it's like good enough for Comic Con, but that's not good enough for your movie. <laughs> like that's you're good enough to yeah. take it to Comic Con, not yeah. quite good enough to be on camera in a film. You're two magic, two magic, two magic. Does it have okay. a wall of power around it? Oh, then no, you don't have a battle arena. So we're watching him siege like this uh, this, uh, this this English city or yeah. something like that. Yeah, because his whole plan, monastery, his whole plan is to end Christianity. Yes, because he's, he's like, I'm the I'm Thor. Jesus is fucking up my shit. I don't yeah. like it. I've come for that which is not yours, nor your one god, nor his son. <laughs> Norse mythology needs to come back. Dude. We're making a comeback. There's a scene where he is walking towards this door that has been barricaded. And I had to stop the movie and Climb. message Brian and say, what the fuck? Why did they motion track a helmet onto this guy? They motion track <laughs> this helmet, roughly, his fucking Spartan-y looking helmet. Mm. On, and I know I know other cultures use helmets like that, but um, <laughs> onto his face, and it's so bad. <laughs> it's yeah. not like he doesn't have that helmet to wear. That's what the is other the thing. issue with it? He has the helmet the rest of the movie, and it's actually on his head. Mm -hmm. They, for some reason, in this moment, didn't he wasn't wearing the helmet, and they felt like they needed him to be, and I don't know why. <laughs> my only thought is that they filmed, my only thought, Kyle, is that they filmed he's wearing it when he busts through the door, which was filmed probably at a different time, mm -hmm. maybe you know a month later or something, and he was wearing it there, but he was but when they shot oh, they the needed, outside yeah, shot, okay. he wasn't wearing it. So, and for continuity's sake, they were like, fuck, we gotta they, they, they the it. They on gave them. it like a, to a college undergrad. Yes. And then we're like, hey, can you uh can you do some after effects magic and put this helmet on this guy? It's incredible. Oh my god. Uh, so he breaks in and murders everybody. This is where he like 360 spins a guy and snaps his neck. <laughs> That's incredible. So uh, but then he steals um, Mary Magdalene's necklace, I yes. believe is what it is. And I don't know, I guess it's, it's gonna give him power he, of some he sort. Need, they, yeah, they need ancient relics. The necklace. It is a holy relic. Indeed. It is the necklace of Mary Magdalene. And for some reason, this Christian relic meshes well with the Norse relics? I don't know, man. They're all... I think the idea is that it, all of the gods are real, like, and so somehow stealing relics from all the religions can create super... Like, I think... Okay. I don't know. The Viking gods used holy relics as keys to unlock the gates to reign over man. But he then crucifies the priest or whatever that was there. We, 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 we do all this complaining and then their production company's like, hey, do you guys want to work some special effects No, I do not. No. no, I do not. I'm bad at it. I will not do a good job. I don't know what I'm doing, but I know that's not good. <laughs> uh, call Colin. Colin might want to do it for you. Yeah. I'm so sorry. 
And then we cut to our introducing Dominic Purcell post death, or we think flashback, whatever. He's in the woods. This is ten years later. Yes. Does it say that? Yes. Oh. Well, there's there's a point where Sven brings it up. Ten oh years yeah. Later. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, he says it's been ten years. Yeah, yeah. When he comes back and meets him. Yeah. You know, it's ten years. Ten years. But he's 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 hunting a bear in the woods, mm. and I love he pulls out he has a dagger, and it's the most ridiculous mall ninja shit. And I literally was like, wait, Kyle, <laughs> is that Gru Blade the Fed Slayer? Because it fucking looks <laughs> like Gru Blade the Fed Slayer. I don't know if it is, but it fucking looks like it. It fucking looks um, like it. As you do when you're cornering a wounded animal, you need to strip down to nothing but Shirtless. Your, your chiseled abs. Yep. Uh, and, and just go like this, just arms out <sighs> with your weapon. Yep. And then we cut to a shot of the bear with really bad CG spears sticking mm-hmm. in it. It's got like arrows or whatever like sticking out of it. Uh, he ends up fighting the bear and then stabbing it and killing it. <laughs> and, and then and there's a shot where his hand is on the bear and it's the comp- just it, it's because it, the bear is not actually there. It's CG, no. so his hand is like floating and clipping and it's. Looks terrible. And then he apologizes to the bear, obviously, for killing it, which is what you would do. Forgive me, old friend. But then he gets back home and, uh, surprise, Frey, yes. uh, one of the gods of something. Wolf god? Isn't he wolf god? Anyway. I don't know. Uh, shows up. Stay your business. My lord Frey. I, and I couldn't get over his work. It's so yes, it's, it's like this gold gown. It remind what it reminded me of with with him and his sister. What it reminded me of was uh, the second Hellboy movie. I have not with, seen the second uh, Hellboy uh, movie. Give it a watch. It's okay. It's wild. Um, but yeah, it's it's so ridiculous. It it reminded me of Ember Days as well. Yes. Yes. Well, and, and my biggest issue, and I know he's a god, so it's like whatever, but it's so clean and it, it just looks cheap. Like it just mm-hmm. looks like they got it at a, at a Halloween store or something like that. But also he has these CG tattoos, which motion track, okay, onto his arms, but not mm-hmm. amazing. Um, and then also I love that his Cra- look- crazy, crazy idea. Um, one of the options you could have done is do green key it out they might have done that they might have done that they might have done that because they it's it's actually not a terrible motion track which made me think they also almost might have done like Mm -hmm. green tattoos on there and then like keyed them out afterwards or something i don't know i bring you news of coming war thor has returned to the midgard he brings news of a, a, a coming war, and I just couldn't, no matter what he's saying the whole time, I couldn't stop, I just couldn't not laugh at him, because you can just see his little nipples <laughs> through his little sheer fabric, his little god nipples just hanging out, and it's just, I, I don't, it's so funny. I don't know, I could not not laugh at it. Skull. Skull. But he, we find out in this moment that Freya mm. um, showed up and she, and this is where we find out that she brought him back to life on the battlefield. Mm. It was just like, oh, she came and was like, hey, surprise. Freya. Live, my lover. Live. I love you. Apparently, Dominic Purcell's dick is just that good. Yep. She was like, I'm bringing this mortal back to life because yep. I want some more. Well, unfortunately. No, yeah, they can't be together yep. anymore because I guess the power of her bringing him back to life somehow means, I don't know. She explains it at the end. I didn't care. But your life came with condition that you and I could never experience love again. Also, this is like one of the plots of God of War, right? It, <laughs> like, which, which, which part? I don't know. Like, well, because then, like, so Frey is like, you have to go. Thor is trying to to conquer the world. Mm-hmm. You have to go get this this special ancient. Yes, there is in Helheim a gilded horn. Now, once blown in the very face of Thor, will destroy Thor's human flesh and send him back to a place of spirits where he belongs. 
That, that is pretty much every god of war. Yeah, game. and then stop this god from taking over the world. I was like, this is every plot of God yep. of War, right? Like yep. basically. I told you, boy. And and because he's e human even, or even undead, down, even down to a a mortal man being saved by a god. Yes, and being and going to hell. Yes. Like because he's able to go to Helheim. In this, and I thought, and I could be wrong. I played the, the fourth God of War game. You go to Hellheim. Yes, and uh, and isn't the reason he's able to go because he's like part God or part mm -hmm. undead or whatever? In this one, they specifically say, "Eric, you are now an undead. Only an undead can pass through Hellheim and return to meet God." And I'm sure God of War nerds are mad because I don't, I don't, I played the game once. I don't remember all the <laughs> details. But in this one, they explain that he's well, he, the only one that can go to Helheim because he is undead. He, go, he goes to hell twice. He goes to hell once in the first game, yes. and then to Helheim in the fourth game. Yeah, yes. He's got his frequent flyer miles. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, he yeah he explains that he can go because he's undead, and his name's Eric, by the way, um, like Eric but with an extra I. Eric Bloodletter. Hi, Thane of Jomsburg. But he can go to hell because he's undead because he got brought back, but the gods can't go or whatever, so they need him to go uh, and get this horn. Not even a god, not even me, can enter and return. But you can. So that he can blow it and stop Thor. Retrieve the horn. Make your way to the hinge of stone inside the fort at Trondheim. Blow the horn there, and Thor will be defeated. So he's like, all right, I've got to go on my mission. He's got to, he's got to round up the, the gang, and he goes to get Sven, who you talked about earlier, mm -hmm. and he shows up at Sven's house, and Sven's like, ah! Sven is ride or die as shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, it's a long way, so we best get going. No, Sven. This journey I'm on, it's dangerous. You have a wife, family, child. Yeah, and I'm a Viking first and foremost. So give me a moment to collect my things and bid farewell. Immediately, he's just like, oh, yeah, we're going to fucking hell? Sure, let me get my well, shit. Wait, wait, hang on. What about your wife and your kids? <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> They're not even important enough to be in this movie. We're not going to yeah. see them, Kyle. I, hey, honey, I got to go murder some people. <laughs> I got to go murder some demons in hell. Adios. You have a wife? Family, child. Yeah, and I'm a Viking first and foremost. Uh, yeah, and we again, they're not even important enough to warrant an appearance. We hear them in the distance yeah. or whatever. So give me a moment to collect my things and bid farewell, and I will be back. But I also love that there's like no conversation. I guess it, they've already talked about it, but about the fact that Eirik came back from the yeah. dead. I was like, wait, does he know? Was they, he there when he came back from the dead? I think he was, yeah, but they, not in the scene we see. In the scene we see, Freya shows up and he's his body's just there alone. And But but at the scene earlier, Sven was there holding his body. I don't know, it doesn't really make sense, but whatever. I was like unsure if Sven knew or didn't know that Eirik had been brought back to life by a goddess or not. I don't know, I, it, that's never explained. You know, it's 10 years. 10 years. I thought you would have showed your face before then. Well, they're, they're starting their adventure, yes. uh, but they need passage to like some sort of city. Yes. So they run across the, a, a, a wagon tradesman. Yes. Yeah, yeah, a merchant or whatever taking mm. stuff, and he, he has a he's, he has a guy locked in the <laughs> back of back his, of his cart. truck. What the? <laughs> what man or a man is called a jello? Niemann uh, Schwein. And this is Yang, <laughs> who we're introduced to. Yes. Release him. What? You heard me. Release him. Uh, yeah, he's he's from China or some. They don't ever mm. go into detail. Some Eastern, a traveler from an Eastern nation or whatever. Who's your friend? We found him. I think he might be an elf, but he fights like a Valkyrie. An elf, you say? An elf. <laughs> but they get into town, and then this merchant guy like turns on him and it tries to, I don't know, mm -hmm. sell him out or whatever. Did you think you could mess with Eustace and live? And uh, they get jumped by all these guys and they start and fighting they just everybody. Murder people they left murder and right. everybody. And then Yang comes in and starts beating the shit out of everybody mm -hmm. and just like stabbing people with spears and but, shit. So they killed like six people in this yeah. little town. Yeah. And then they, uh, and then Yang's just like, yeah, I paid you back, so we're, we're all good. Hey, you hungry? You, you want hungry? you want food? It's food. 
Meanwhile, all these corpses are just in the middle of this town. Why they go to the local tavern? And nobody even says anything. It's like, boy, back then he just murder everybody in the center square. Nobody would even <laughs> say anything. Uh, but I did love one of my favorite moments in that is that the main merchant guy, who's like the reason that you know all he pull, he brought all his thugs with him to attack them or whatever. Did you think you could mess with Eustace and live? He dies in the scene so casually off like it's made so little point of it. he's like the main antagonist for this scene well it, it, no he we see one of our guys stab a guy in the stomach mm -hmm. and then the camera kind of pulls out and you see that he stabbed the merchant was behind the guy that he stabbed and he stabbed through the first guy and stabbed the merchant guy <laughs> And he just falls over dead, and it's not, and it was so such a weird choice. I don't know the whole. It, to me, it felt like they didn't get more coverage of that guy dying. No. Like it was supposed to be a better. Anyways, so then they get in, and and I I guess it was I guess they're friends with the Jarl or whatever, and that's why mm. they're not worried about the repercussions so. because they go show up in his hall and uh, he just gives the, them food the, even more beautifulness of, of all, all the the skyrim nordic culture because yeah. this is where I, most of my knowledge and the stuff comes right. skyrim uh, very historically accurate skyrim <laughs> Irik is a thane <laughs> yeah yeah he is a thane yeah Hi, Thane of the Jomsburg. Yeah, Irik's a Thane, and I assume this guy's a Jarl or whatever. I don't even know what his name is, but um, he, <laughs> the white. Yeah, guy. he seems to be in charge of this city or whatever. Uh, Os, Os, uh, Os, not not Oslo, but Osberg. Um, Osberg, yeah. yeah. And uh, they, uh, he he like has them. He's they're hanging out having dinner, and then they have a big feast that night. Mm -hmm. And I love how clearly they just went to like the local Tesco or grocery store and got like fifty rotisserie chickens yes. and just set them on every <laughs> table. <laughs> and that's like, all right, there we go. That's our ancient feast. But uh, Irik is is making this plea for people to help him with this journey. Yes, to go forth and stop. Thor. I, I guess Thor is like known at this point. Like he's people know he's out and about. Yeah, that he's here, like over. doing shit. Yeah, yeah. So any man here who would be a Viking, come, follow me. The people he has stand up. It, like these are people. Like you probably went to Venice Beach, the bodybuilder section, and you were like, "Hey, you want to be in a movie?" Like these There's are two, the huge, first two guys yeah, are huge, yes. Just huge dudes. The first two guys are huge. A couple of the other ones are just kind of no, like guys. No, <laughs> they just look yeah. like somebody's uncle. Been, like, like, <laughs> one of them, the, the huntsman, looks like a fucking accountant. <laughs> yeah. And I love, I love, and, and everybody just has the worst wig. I, I have yes. so many notes about it, but in particular, those motherfuckers with the gray hair, yeah, it's, their it's so wigs good. don't even fit on their fucking heads, no. Kyle. They look like you when you were Tommy Wiseau. Like, they're like, I, I like one of the one of the because like one of them's the huntsman and the other one introduces himself as butcher of women and children. Yeah. Bernard, killer of women and children. Uh, we will find uh, out his backstory eventually. Um, uh, I do like how he gives a really shitty speech. Uh, yes, to every speech he gives in this is so, so fucking <laughs> shitty. Oh my god. I stand here today, for God has asked me to write a song for people to sing in years to come. A somber song it may be. And we don't even talk about it when we get to the end. I have so many notes about that final speech. Um, but he's like, any more men? And as soon as he said any more men, I was like, oh no, oh, but you're getting a sexy yep. lady. <laughs> yep. Any more men? Bring the fair. Daughter of Hildegard. And this woman comes walking down the stairs and is like, I'll join you. And he's like, fuck you, no. This is not a quest for a woman. <laughs> and, but she still yep. does, because I think she owns the she boat owns they the boat. use. Yeah. Yeah. I told you that woman was not to come. Well, I'm afraid she has to. Why? Well, you remember the conversation we had about the boat? Hmm? Well, that is the new owner. And Captain, your crew. Uh, but they get to this boat the next day, and she's there on the boat. And Kyle, where does this take place? The north, <laughs> Norway, the super north, Denmark. It's one of those it's always, Norwegian it's areas. It's snowing, and there's icebergs it's snowing everywhere. Snowing, and there's ice and everywhere. She's wearing a fucking ex 
like bikini top. Yeah, he's bi- wearing a bikini, leather bikini top. Bikini top. And that's it. I was like, are you fucking kidding? Now, to be fair, most of the dudes are wearing like sh- sleeveless like yes. shirts and stuff, and and our main character is like always like billowing open chest shirt and whatnot. But yeah, the whole time in the snow, no matter what, she's yes. just in a bikini top. It's, it's so, so ridiculous. fucking ridiculous. We also then cut to very briefly. We cut back to Thor's sweet. Hall as he's mm-hmm. like readying his army or whatever. Oh, is this the part where he's like lounged out on that big bench? Yeah, bench and you can see the fucking shoe. Like he actually has like like a modern shoe print on the bottom of it. <laughs> no, because, I missed that. Oh my! There, there's one part where he's like laid out, like he's got his leg crossed, uh, like going across this bench or this throne of his, and it's like Timberland like style boots on the bottom of it. Nice. Because and, and then it's just fur on the top of it. Yeah. You're not supposed to see that. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. No, my favorite here is one of the guys in the. He he has like his generals or captains or whatever mm-hmm. there, um, and one of the guys straight up just looks like Hagger the Horrible, like the comic book. <laughs> yeah. He's got the helmet with the dumb little horns. Yes, in yes. It's <laughs> so Hagger the Horrible, man. What are we doing? Yeah, and the costumes in this whole movie are just that are all bad. Like mm-hmm. some of them are these, better these are than the probably, others. These generals are yes, probably the worst. Yes, they're some of the worst ones. Yeah, anybody there because there's several people that have those really dumb horned helmet. They're just so. Ridiculous looking. Uh, uh, so then they're getting ready to leave, or they get on the boat. They're sailing. Blah blah yeah. blah. We get some montage, and I love they they arrive at and, and, and I don't Yormskar or whatever. I think so. It's, no, no, this isn't Yormskar yet or whatever. But it's 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 literally just like a fishing village. Yes, it's like a little fishing village. They know uh, this this druid's been held captive. Hel- hel- being held captive there, and they need this druid. And they get off, and I love right after they get off the boat. <laughs> And now she's not the only one that has an issue of not seeming like they know how to use the weapons they're using. But the woman on the end, and I can't even remember her name. Brynn the Fair, daughter of Hildegard. She gets off and she goes to knock an arrow in her bow. And it is the most clumsy, like... She's like she barely she gets it out of the thing through. and then she feeds it through and then like Ugh. struggles to get it knocked. This is way too quiet for my liking. Stay close. And it's like sliding around. Well, and like these, these are not like recurve bows. I, I'm not sure if they probably wouldn't have recurve bows I don't, or whatever. I, don't, I have no idea. And they're just like. They're just like they're giant. I mean, they're lo- they're literally yeah, long, they're long bows. bows. Yeah, it's just I don't know the way she's knocking that arrow looks funny. This is way too quiet for my liking. Stay close. But then also, because then it cuts, and one of the guys, I think it might be, it's one of the gray-haired guys, Mm -hmm. is running into the city, and he's holding a single axe with two hands, but it's like 12 inches long! It's so tiny! It's like this long! And he's like, I'm gonna get you with my two-handed axe! It's like, what are you doing? It's literally like 12 inches long and he's got two hands on it. It's incredible. Uh, a fight breaks out because of course we need we need action. Yes. All these people just and I don't and they, know who they, they, they are. They look like peasants. Yeah, they, they all look like peasants. They, I thought they were just random villagers, but mm-hmm. they all just like come screaming like bloody only murder. one person looks like a, ca- a capable fighter. Yeah, everybody else. The guy at the end, everyone yeah. else looks like a level one commoner that you'd <laughs> yeah. slaughter in D and D. And they do. They slaughter all of them. They show up and just start murdering mm-hmm. everybody. <laughs> And then they uh, uh, they do they have a scene, and I was like, "How fucking dare you!" Luckily, they don't keep this up. But uh, one of the two the two beefy cake guys, yeah. they do they, the they fucking do the counting Gimli thing. and Legolas. Thing. Oh, I was so oh, I'm so mad. I got one. He's like, "That's two one for me," and the other guy's like, and I was like, "Fuck you." I got one. And you know what this dwarf says to that? Ishkakui, I Fuck you. Mm-hmm. They don't keep that up, luckily. But um, oh my god, two two of our uh, fe- our fellowship fall. Yes. in this fight, one one of them was a guy who just was at that feast and was like, 
Will there be a fight? He was watching them slaughter these townspeople and be like, that's something I could get behind. Yeah. Lasts about five minutes in yeah. this fight and just gets his killed. His name's like Henrique Henrique or something like that. Because yes. his dad's there with them and they both die. Henrik! Ah! 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 Like, and that's, and, he's and, the one who gets murdered by the guy with the crazy hair and the giant yeah. axe. Buddy, buddy, just stay a goat farmer. <laughs> yeah, man. It's way better, way better. And then we get a big showdown between him and uh, Dominic Purcell, um, Irik. And it's so anticlimactic. He beats him in like two seconds. Yeah. He just like cuts his arm cuts off. off yep. And it's gone. Oh, okay. I thought we were going to okay. get like a big cool fight. No, no, we're not. <laughs> Um, but then they they find the druid, um, and this scene's kind of cool at least. Like he's being held in this mm -hmm. big cage because so he can't be allowed to touch ground because he's a dru he's an earth mage or whatever. And mm -hmm. if he can touch the earth, he can do magic. Um, and so they lower him out of this cage, and he gets his powers back. And it looks pretty bad because it's like really oh mediocre. His CG. eyebrows are like wispy <laughs> as shit. Yeah, and they add like plants growing on him the whole time, but mm -hmm. they're always CG. It would have been so easy to just. Cost, make a costume that had fake plants on it. Why would you do it all CG? I don't understand that at all. It would have been so easy. But then we get a sweet sailing montage as they sail away with the druid. <laughs> then they arrive at the place the druid told them they needed to go to get the horn, mm -hmm. which is the enter to Helheim, basically. I, I think like it's like the you gate know, they're to like Helheim. in Helheim. They're, he, he has to get past the gate yeah. because he has to get past the guard. The, right. The, but he has to swim down yes. to it. It's underwater. And I love they're like, you'll need tallow because the water's really cold. You're going to need tallow. So they're gonna l l grease him up, basically. Just oh my rub yes. And that was just an excuse for the woman to just oh, really know. get out of the And I was pack. like, well, yeah, and let's make sure the only woman on the boat does it. <laughs> it's like, okay, great. She's just rubbing lard on his pecs. <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> But I will say this is pretty fucking cool. He guys the whole at, scene of with him. the horses. Yes. Yeah, that's that is, pretty cool. That, I was like, what the? Fuck that's is pretty shit? cool and trippy. He dives in, he's swimming, and like the the you know hell starts like playing tricks mm -hmm. on him or whatever. And so all these random horses just appear in the water, mm -hmm. and it's really trippy and weird. And that was like pretty cool. I, I also thought a good thing was like he's constantly swimming down and down and down, and they just flip yeah. the entire perspective. Yeah, yeah, when he gets underneath the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. Also, in this scene, as cool as the horse part is, they thought for some reason that we needed a fucking reminder of what the druid literally just said. He appears and it's like, swim far and deep. Follow the current as it gets colder and colder to the very depths. Keep swimming down. You gotta get past the yeah, where the water's we, cold. We are or aware of what happened five minutes he ago. He just told us that, whatever. Yeah. Swim far and deep. Follow the current as it gets colder and colder to the very depths. Swim far and deep. Follow the current as it gets colder and colder to the very depths. Um, but yeah, you said he, we, we start, he, we get to this lake underwater and it's the shots upside down and he comes through and then the camera spins over. Ah, it's like, ah, it's all right. It's kind of cool. Um, but this cave looks terrible. It does. Oh my God. It, it reminds me of like them recycling like <clears throat> guts sets. Oh, it's, it's the aggro crag, baby. <laughs> they, they destroyed the aggro crag and they put it fucking everywhere. On your mark, get set. And with that whistle, the climb up Boulder Canyon begins. Kostya looks to be a little bit dismayed by the venomous vapors. The Banshee almost... That is... There is 100% there's pieces of the aggro crag in this set. I... 100% that was my note. It was like, holy shit, that's the aggro crag. And let's go to our referee, Moore Quirk, for the rules. Mo. At the sound of my whistle, all three players will grab a crossbow and jump off the aerial bridge. But then he gets down there and gets attacked by a bunch of... Um, Undead? Undead monsters, which this is exactly out of the, the, the most recent uh, God, God of, of War. War. I assume this is from mythology or something. Well, 
when was this made? 2013. So it was before. Damn. Yeah, because this is Got exactly stealing some notes. I, I was about to say, this is exactly the thing that happens in the in that game where you get down and you're in hell and there's like frozen people and some of them are, are like dust, but other ones like come to life and mm. attack you or whatever. And these like frozen warriors come to life and attack them, and he ends up getting <laughs> destroyed by them. But surprise! Yeah, one of them takes a chunk out of his, yeah. out of his back. Yeah, but surprise! His zombie dad shows up and saves mm. him. <laughs> What? Yeah, uh, there's this monster zombie king, and it's his father. Father. Except he tells him, I'm not your dad. And I was like, oh. Oh, so Odin definitely fucked this guy's <laughs> wife. Eric, you are not my son. Truly, you're not my son. Your mother never knew. He came, had my face, my image. And uh, our guy is the son of Odin. Not quite, we'll get there. His dad, <laughs> I guess, agrees to help him get the, the horn. And he's like, you gotta go, it's over there. <laughs> and he walks over and it's just- It's just a wall of gold-painted women. You will find the horn within the Gate of Souls. Naked gold women, just a right, and it's at least an interesting visual idea. They don't do much with mm -hmm. it, but it is interesting, uh, and it's executed fairly Wait, poorly. What, but what, what layer of hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this is that classic, like you know, he's got to work past temptation because they're all like, "Stay, stay with us in our giant gold orgy pile." <laughs> like no i can't i need the horn yeah, i i couldn't think of many work i could think of worse deaths <laughs> yeah uh, uh, but he's like i got he grabs the horn and he's like now and his dad yeah, just, just yanks, yanks him out father now damn you which is Fucking hilarious that they, you think they talked that through ahead of time. He's mm -hmm. like, all right, dad, I'm going to dive head first into that orgy pile. And when I yell now, I need you to just yank me out of there. So, son, are you good? Do you need, do you need to be pulled out yet? Not yet. <laughs> this guy was like, like five minutes. <laughs> it was like, okay, 10 minutes. And then, I'll, you know, I'll yell and then you pull me out. All right. Just give me like 10, okay, 15 minutes. And then. <laughs> Also, we get the explanation up on the surface of as this is happening of the the the, the guy who's like I killed women and children. Yeah. His backstory. Gone down my farm. My father's home. Killed my wife and my children. Which. They they say they explain this like it makes it fine. Is that yeah. so? Well, no, he goes full Anakin. He yeah. goes full Anakin yeah. Skywalker. Yeah. So I killed those raiders. I killed them all. I killed their wives. I killed their children. And they're like, "Oh, that makes sense. Good job." <laughs> I was like, "Wait!" And I listen to their screams as they watch their seed wipe from the Middle Kingdom. That's a man spoken like a true Viking. What? Yeah, it's because Sven, Sven's like, that's a man with good Viking yeah, on. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> okay, sure, great. Ugh. They meant to take all that I had, but they cannot take my honor. Because he even says, like, I couldn't let them take my honor. I was like, I think you did. When you murdered all of those children, <laughs> I think your honor kind of fucking whoop went right out the window, but. Wait, look out for Garm, the Hound of Helheim. He is a gatekeeper. And the dragon thing? What is that? That's a, it's, it's a dog. It's supposed to be a blind dog. Is that what it but is? But it has two legs, a long tail, and it's nothing but a giant head. It looks head. like a T-Rex. I looks know, like it looks weird. ridiculous. <laughs> It's a giant head with tiny arms and legs. 
I at first I thought when we just saw the head that it was supposed to be um, the world snake, like mm -hmm. just the head of the world snake or whatever, or world serpent or whatever. But it's not. It's this crazy dog. Th anyways, it chases them around as they're escaping. Turn around, boy. Think well of me, always. The the dad like sacrifices yeah, himself. To, he, like cuts. Uh, Eric takes some of his blood and is like, now I smell like you, and then he Whoa, runs off. And eat me, yeah, and, and this crazy T-Rex dog thing eats him. <laughs> he, so he gets into the water, he's swimming up to the surface. We have, again, flashbacks to his thing his dad just said to him. Yeah. Like, it's like, just, okay, great. Think well of me, son. Think well of me, always. Uh, so now he's got the horn. They got to get to this hinge of some sort and, mm -hmm. and blow the horn in Thor's face is what they say. Yeah, and they need an army, though. Yes, they got to get an army. So yeah. they, they go to... Um, this is where they go to Yorm something. Yor, 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 Yomsburg. They go to yeah, Yomsburg. Which, which was the uh, kingdom that he was once king of. And now his brother's ruling it. Yep. My lord Beothric and great captains of Yomsburg. I present Eirik, son of Alfred. But he's Eirik's brother. He's running this place. He's an asshole. He throws them in prison. <laughs> yeah. Take them away, search them, and bring whatever you find to me. Like immediately. Yeah, he, t he takes the Yomsburg soldiers and basically just sells them as, as bodyguards to the highest bidders and whatnot. And so he just has this throne room full of gold. Like, look how rich I've made our kingdom. <laughs> they're, they're whipping Dominic Parcell. They're yeah. got him on a rack. They're, they're just, just like beating the shit out of him or whatever, torturing him. Meanwhile, our, our heroes that stayed on the boat, Yang and, and the woman, mm -hmm. they're breaking in with the druid to free. And the druid like gives them fog as cover and yeah. kind of stays behind. Kind of stays behind and gives the horn. them. And they walk through and they assassinate a bunch of people. They get into a fight in like some water. And I love he, Yang lights one of the guys on fire. <laughs> And he, he keeps just, fighting. Like, yeah. He's standing above a foot of water. Yes. <laughs> and he's just, he just on fire. Roll backwards. Yeah. <laughs> he's just on fire fighting. It's like, okay, great. So they're able to get him out and they get into the throne room, but then the druid shows up and mm -hmm. he double crossed them. Would this be what you seek? You bastard! Traitor! My, my. This is a fine thing. He, uh, he gives the horn to, uh, the, the evil brother or whatever, um, and they're all being taken to be executed. Dun, dun, dun. But, but, the people who are taking him to be executed are, are total bros. My lord, we are with you. We will take you away from this place and give you shelter. Yeah, they're loyal to. The, I was like, wow, that was a fucking coincidence yeah. and a half. Yeah. It turns out it probably but wasn't they don't, a coincidence. They don't, they don't but... even take him like to be like you would no. figure. You'd figure they'd take me like, okay, go ahead and take him to like the castle square and execute him there and hang up his body as like a lesson no. to people and no. stuff like that. Yeah, where yeah. are they taking him to execute him? Like off into the distance? Like yeah, yeah. They're... throw the rest off the cliff. And then uh, that evening, as they're waiting to leave the next morning, we get a sex scene. Uh oh, uh oh. But what if I wanted to give you what only a woman can? Oh, we, uh, the, the, the woman, uh, the shield like, maiden she, well, shows she's up. Well, she doesn't have much choice, right? She yeah. has to. I mean, not with a bikini top like that. It's her only purpose in the movie is to have her boobs. Um, and she, uh, she shows up and she tries to seduce him. And he's like, I can't. Brianna. I promise my heart to another. I'm such a tortured I'm a god soul. fucker. <laughs> I only fuck gods. <laughs> and then as he goes to look in the mirror, Freya like channels into this woman and is able to speak through her. Yeah. And it basically is like, it's fine. Go fuck that young woman. Bye. Well, I mean, <laughs> the god is said. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather be dead than live my life without you. You must. It's no shame to love again. 
Uh, so Fre Freya's all good with it, and he's like, dope, uh, let's have sex. And we, we don't even get a tasteful sex scene, it's just one shot of them kissing. And that's wildly undelivering, under delivering for what this film is. I feel like there should be yeah. What? Come on, whatever. Um, <laughs> then they find the next morning that the evil brother is dead. Dead. His and he was. They, they were like he was double crossed by the druid. By the druid. Yeah. It gets confusing because the plot eventually mm. becomes that the druid was double crossing the whole time. He created a copy of the horn mm. and gave the fake horn to the 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 brother kid or whatever and then the brother i think gave that horn to thor and then i think thor killed i thought it was implied that thor had somebody kill and that, it doesn't it doesn't fucking matter point being is they find him dead and they're and this is this is how crazy like they're they're, they're trying to portray viking culture where they're just like hey yeah he's probably killed by the druid guy so yeah. um are we just are we just gonna be down for Eric? So we just, yeah, we're we just gonna go help Eric. Right, cool. Let's cool. take the rest of the army and go help Eric. <laughs> yeah, that was that. quick. My lord, your brother is dead. We pledge ourselves to you and your noble cause. Um, also, meanwhile, we cut back to Thor's castle, and I love how they're like, I don't even know the context. One of the generals is yeah, like well, mad he, at Thor. Literally saying he wants to destroy all of mankind. Oh, that's Chaos right. Everywhere. And this guy's like, this, hey, how about this you don't guy kill all who is of us? Very short, even compared <laughs> yeah. to the other generals. Yeah. It's like, 1v1 me in the woods, chump, you won't. <laughs> and then the Thor's <laughs> like, I will literally break you in half. What the fuck are you talking about? What care if I for mortals? I am a god. You may care little, my lord, but I'll not let you lead us into our own destruction. He rips, uh, out, his rips out his eyeball. eyeball, which kills him, which generally in movies, and I think in real life, that would not like instantly kill you. Like no. plenty of people have lost an eye and survived. Like for I mean, some reason. Granted, the guy also had his arm broken. He got pushed into like a pillar. True. He probably uh, had some internal injuries yeah. that, that contributed to things there. Um, a, lot of, a lot of trauma. Yes. Yes. Uh, so then we get to the big final battle, and we got. I gotta talk about fucking Irik's speech here. It's the most it's boring. So bad. Vikings, brothers, across the ridge is the army of the north, more than a thousand strong. We are but a few, five to one. Terrible fucking speech. If you wish, I'll ride to their captains and ask for an extra day so they can gather more men. It only seems fair. He's so uncharismatic. He's also trying to rip off uh, Tyrion's speech at Blackwater. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Don't fight for honor. Don't fight for glory. That's your gate he's ramming. If he gets in, it will be your houses he burns. Your gold he steals. Your women he will rape. Today, you do not fight for yourself. Today, you fight for your wives. Your sons, your daughters. Yeah, li yes, absolutely. But it's also, it's so boring. It gets to the end and he just says, come, follow me. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Come. Follow me. <laughs> that wasn't very good. Sure, it's such a boring speech. A man is measured by his courage his devotion to family, his willingness to grab his destiny. If we do not fight this day, there will be a generation of terror and the gods will unleash horrors of the old age. But he explains during the speech that they're outnumbered five to one. They're outnumbered five to one. Kyle, bet, go ahead. If you had an option, you're running an army, you're outnumbered five to one. What is your, your first battle plan as soon as the battle starts? Kyle. S send in your infantry in line. In line. Not even in square. In line. Charging straight into the yes. enemy's army. <laughs> Outnumbered five to one. Not even bringing in your cavalry at the same time to flank. No. And that's the worst part is that they run in. They get their ass kicked. Retreat. Retreat. Okay. 
and they go retreat and they start running yes, away. And then the cavalry and comes then in. And then the cavalry comes in after they're already retreated, so the army has time to turn around and face the cavalry. It's like <laughs> What Okay, this is terrible. Mm. But then they all come running, and of course they're going to win, so it doesn't matter. There's all, all kinds it's of fighting here. Left and right. uh, what's her name? Does a flip off her horse? <laughs> like a backflip so, yes. off her horse? It's pretty wild. <laughs> um, and as fight scenes go, this one could be worse, but it's also not good. Mm. It's also very clear that John Fu, the actor who plays Yang, is like the best. <laughs> Like he's the by far the most talented like martial artist or person. Yeah, because like, he can actually do, like spinning kicks. And yeah, stuff. and and like so and like he knows how to use like a spear and stuff. So he keeps getting spears and spinning them around. Like he probably did taekwondo and stuff. So he's pretty talented. So they use him a lot. <laughs> like they're like keep showing him. He can actually do stuff. Now Thor has his horn though up on the hinge. Yeah. And and Dominic Purcell's got to get to him. Meanwhile, uh, fucking all of our terrible wig people are dying. Just uh, all being yeah. murdered mercilessly <laughs> in the field. Who cares? Uh, there's a super slow death scene for one of those two like stabs. Yeah, one, one of the one of the brothers gets that I don't like, care no. about. Like, Why no, do okay. they didn't even if, they didn't even this, establish them as characters? Yeah, if this had a sequel, maybe this would matter more. Or if they gave them any time on screen before this for me to care about yeah. them. Those characters literally have like no I, lines. What would have been movie. great because they, they they met in Osberg, right? Yeah. If if for uh, the arrival of this once king, this thane, they were doing like feats of strength and stuff, and you had these two guys competing against one another, that would have been great. It would have introduced their character, introduced the their fact that they're their strength and and then like what they're good at, mm -hmm. and they're in their bond like because you it, have them like and it gives them a reason to be there because they want to show off. Yeah, you because it would be even fun too, it, and a way to establish their relationship when they show up. It's like a wrestling match because it's like a you know they're they're having like a big show like you said it's feats of strength they're wrestling each other and it seems like they hate each other and they're beating the shit out of each other and then at the end they get up and they laugh and they hug each other and we find out they're brothers but they're like all bloody and shit so we know they're like those kind yeah. of guys you know what i mean who will like just beat the shit out of each other but actually are like love each other and are fine like that does so much character work in like 40 seconds in this movie they just stand in nope. the background when they're introduced it's yep. like what the there's like hey what Anyway, yeah, we'll come kill some people. With yeah, you. whatever. And you'll never hear from us again until we get a slow mo death scene, and you're supposed to care. I don't yeah. care. And then Thor and Eirik 1v1 on the hill. Let's go. No items. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's so it's so ridiculous. They're just like, all right, let's let's rip rip down right to the take off the shirts and everything. Yep. Nothing. They just jack it out, and it's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, they went. They, uh, what's? I, I wish I knew the reference, the Smash reference for one v one, no items on whatever that map is. Smash that it, Brother. Or, well, uh, Final Destination. Final Destination. Yeah. That's it. yeah. Um, and so they're beating the shit out of each other, and Thor tells them during this fight, uh, "Surprise! I'm, I'm your dad. dad. You cannot stand against me, my son. I am your father. Great, great, amazing. Which doesn't make any sense. I thought it would have been more interesting if Odin was his dad and mm -hmm. they were brothers. Like, that still adds an interesting dynamic, but also is less weird. I don't know. Um, also, it, they act in the scene like Eirik is surprised by this information. He knew a god was his dad. Did you truly believe a mortal man could rise from the dead? Could drink from a cup of fray without dying. Could lay with the goddess of love. Yeah. His dad told him that. He mm -hmm. said, one of them came down in the shape of me, and, and so your mother didn't even know that it wasn't me. So he told him a god fucked his mom, and that's why he's here. And our, But in the scene, he's like, what? And it's like, you knew, or whatever. The blood of the gods is in your veins. My blood is in your veins. 
But like you said, they've taken all the clothes off and the music starts kicking up. And I was really hoping it was going to be Godsmack or something equally terrible. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like generic rock music, um, but it's all this slow-mo shots in the rain and they're shirtless um, and they're beating the shit out of each other. And then uh, our other friends come up to try to help. They don't do much. They don't do much except for what's her name um, at the very end after Dominic Purcell is, is, is out of it and about to be stabbed yeah. by Thor. She jumps in front of the knife and gets impaled in the stomach. I mean, I <laughs> But uh, she gets stabbed by a knife and, and is dying, and I was like, oh, okay, okay, well, Freya's gonna save her oh, no. for sure. Spoilers, nope. Nope. <laughs> I'm at peace. I have a glorious death. And then, uh, but, so they end up, he ends up, they end up losing, and Thor gets the horn and blows it. And we're like, oh shit. And then like a fucking fire tornado <laughs> starts mm -hmm. happening and Frey shows up and surprise, Frey he was, was double, the double crossing, crossing the whole time. What? He was working with Thor. Yep. He hates people. He wants to bring about the end of men as well. I mean, humanity was betraying them. Men are ungrateful. We have protected you for ages, then you abandon us for some new God. It is time for man to pay the price. <laughs> Yeah, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, who cares? Giant orange tornado. The druids. The druid knew this is all was gonna happen, so he created a fake horn. Mm -hmm. And the horn that Thor has is so, that fake horn, so it's not yeah, real. Yeah. So it, the, the the ritual they're doing backfires yes. because they don't have everything they need. Yeah, and creates like a fucking giant fire tornado that starts sucking everything up. But they're all holding on, and I love the way that Thor is. <laughs> defeated in this movie is that Dominic Purcell grabs his, his hammer, hammer and bonks him on the head. <laughs> <laughs> and he just lets go and flies Whee! away. And I'm, I, you're going to see what I'm going to do in the edit. Cause it's, I couldn't. Is, not. is it, it going to be the squeaky? Yes. It's going to be the squeaky. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh, oh God. Um, but uh, she's, uh, so they've conquered the, the gods. Um, what's her name is dying, but she's at peace with her glorious death and nobody saves her. She just actually dies. Okay. Um, she gets fridged uh, and then they, they send her out <laughs> in, on some terrible CG boats out into the ocean mm -hmm. and throw some, uh, <laughs> do a Viking funeral, light them up. Behold, Brianna the Fair. You see your mother awaiting you in paradise. Such marks the passing of the old gods for the Middle Kingdom. We get one final shot of the awful wig guys as they, they float past yeah, the camera. This, God. <laughs> and then we get a voiceover as we get our Avengers Assemble scene. <laughs> but nobody knows of our story, so our story is not yet done. I am Eric, Eirik Thorson, and we are the guardians of the holy relics. I became known as Eirik Thorson. My men and I have become the guardians of the holy relics. Not many know of our existence, so our song, our song is not yet sung. And I was like, that's a terrible superhero team name, <laughs> Guardians of the Holy Relics. Uh, but they sequel bait. Uh, they come together, him and Yang and I mean, Sven and the other one. God, this doesn't have a sequel. <laughs> It, they they pretended like they made sequels, but they did not. Um, unfortunately, mm. I'm disappointed that they didn't make a sequel. But I will say, uh, uh, Empire again, so bad that this movie's bad, bad. Oh yeah, no, it's horrible. Um, mainly because it's uh, it's two hours long and it's a little boring. It has moments that are it's close for me, but it ends up being bad, bad because I just found I, it a little too boring. I think this would have been better served as a mini series versus yes. an actual film. Oh, definitely, for sure. But it also would have been better served just probably not being not made <laughs> or throwing a lot more money and talent at it. But yeah, it's I, it's not great. It's not a, not a great movie, but it's kind of fun. You can watch it on Tubi if you want. It's something. Oh, uh, that's gonna do it for this episode. As always, you can do us a favor by heading over to patreon.com slash GBRB to support us there for two, five, fifteen bucks a month, two, whatever, however much money a month. Uh, I have a podcast called This Home's Out. We're talking about movies that are based on books. When this episode's out, I don't know what's out because we're too far ahead. We have four minutes left on this, so I'm trying to get this done. Uh, Twitch. Twitch.tv underscore the name. We stream the stuff occasionally. 
occasionally check that out and gv or bb uh slash uh, uh no uh uh tpublic.com search for yeah, good better bad bad you can get merch there and do all sorts of stuff uh, and yeah, that's that's this episode. We're we're done. We're out of time. The just, tapes are tapes are full, Kyle. Just maybe don't watch Vikingdom. Or maybe do if you just want to laugh out how bad it is. I would watch the first ten minutes and then turn it <laughs> yes. off because that's all the funniest stuff. <laughs> Watching seeing Thor in the first ten minutes is worth your price. And Especially then, that helm whoop! that helm tracking. No more after that. You're done. See you.